guys, today I am sharing with you a bunch of authors that I've only read one book from. The books that I'm going to show you are the only thing that I've read by that author. These are all books that I really enjoyed, but I have yet to try anything else by that person. When I really like a book, I like to try out other things from that author to see if it's only that one book I like by them or if I can then explore the rest of their catalogue. And I find that the second book I read from a person can be sometimes more influential than the first in that if the second one isn't any good, I sometimes just assume that the first one I read was maybe the only one I'm going to enjoy by that author and then I stop trying. So the second book I feel is kind of crucial. So if you have suggestions where I should go from any of these authors uh, after I show you the first and only book I've read by them, feel free to leave them in the comments. And obviously all the books I'm about to talk about I have enjoyed so I do recommend them all as well. The first book I want to talk about is The Virgin Suicides by Jeffrey Genides. I have read this multiple times and really enjoy it. I own Middlesex and The Marriage Plot but I have yet to try them out. I've heard good things about both but I just haven't gotten to them yet but I'm really not sure if they're going to be able to compare to The Virgin Suicides for me personally just because I thoroughly enjoyed this book. Next up we have one of my favourite books. It is A Movable Feast by Ernest Hemingway but it is the only Hemingway I've read. This is a non-fiction work about his time in Paris in the 1920s and I absolutely adore it. It is far and away one of my favourite non-fiction works I've ever read and it's just one of my favourite works in general. But for some reason I'm hesitant to read more from him. I don't necessarily like what I know of Hemingway as a person and even though I've loved his non-fiction work which is obviously uh, somewhat about him although really it is more about the people around him and Paris in general um, I'm still I'm hesitant to pick up his fictional work so definitely tell me where I should start because I really should read more Hemingway especially since I love this so much and I really do adore his very straightforward simple prose it's beautiful next up is The Dud Avocado by Elaine Dundee and this is about a young American girl living in Paris in the 1950s it is essentially like reading an Audrey Hepburn film. It's something that I really, really enjoyed, but I have not read anything else by this author. In fact, I don't even know what else she wrote, but I would definitely be interested in checking that out. So if you've read anything by Elaine Dundee, let me know how it went. Next up is Among Others by Jo Walton. And this is the story about a young girl whose twin sister has died. It involves fairies and her away at boarding school. I I'm not doing this justice right now, but trust me, it is actually a really good fantasy read. Maury is actually an avid reader herself, and we see her passion for reading and books throughout. She is especially a huge fantasy fan, so she talks about that genre a lot, and she actually becomes part of a book club. It's a thing. I, th I believe I have a more coherent separate review on this that I will link down below. If I can find any separate reviews on any of these books, I will link them down below if you're interested. But I've heard mixed things about Joe Walton's other work. The only other one I own is Tooth and Claw, which I'm actually excited to read because Jean from Bookish Thoughts has read that and loved it. And that's actually why I picked it up on her recommendation. So I'm excited for that one. But I've heard less than favorable reviews on other books from her. So I'm just not sure where to go because this was really absolutely fantastic. This was actually a gift from Mercedes over at Mercy's Bookish Musings. Um, she loved it and thought that I would too and she was so right. It's such a wonderful book and my love for this makes me not want to be disappointed by her other work. So there's that. Next up is another author that I actually don't know what her other work is. Uh, this is Notes on a Scandal by Zoe Heller and this is about a school teacher who has an affair with a student and it's actually narrated by one of her co-workers who is an older lesbian woman who is slightly in love with her as well. It's a super interesting narrative, I really enjoyed the book, I've seen the film as well and I quite like it. But I have no idea where to go from here. I would like to see what else Zoe Heller has done because this was actually quite a unique reading experience for me. I haven't read a lot else like it. Uh, just the way it was told, the tone of the book, the way that the subject matter was dealt with, I really did enjoy it. Next up we have Chocolat by Joanne Harris. 
Uh, of course this was made into a very popular film with Johnny Depp which I've seen many times and I actually really enjoy. I put off reading the book for a really long time but I loved it when I read it a few years ago. It's relatively different to the film and I actually don't know which I prefer but this really exceeded expectations for me. I don't know what I was expecting, I don't know why I wasn't expecting to like it as much as I did um, but I did really enjoy it. And Joan Harris has quite a lot of other books. I think she has some that are tied in with this one. I own a couple of books from her that I picked up secondhand just because I enjoyed this, but I don't even know really what they are or just where I should be going from here. So Joan Harris fans, please do let me know. Next up is a similar experience. This is Girl with a Pearl Earring by Tracy Chavalet. I'm really not entirely sure how to say her name. And this is another one that I have seen the film and really enjoyed it. Um, but I loved this book. It is a beautiful character study. I just thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. I read it maybe about four years ago now, and I just had such a beautiful experience with it that I definitely would like recommendations of where to go next. I think I also own a couple of secondhand books um, that I picked up after reading this. But as you can tell, I have a theme with not being able to make up my mind on where to go next with certain authors. So recommendations are really welcome. And lastly, we have The Prestige by Christopher Priest. And this is once again a film. Um, I really enjoy the film, but the film and the book, so, so different, so different. I once again don't really have a favorite because they're so different. Um, but I thoroughly enjoy this. It's about a pair of magicians and it has a lot to do with spiritualism, um, that sort of hocus pocus fake seance, uh, you know, knock one for yes and twice for no type nonsense that was very popular back in the 1800s. This is another case of having seen the film first. So when I read this, I was really surprised at uh, pretty much everything about it. I didn't really know what to expect, but I really enjoyed Christopher Priest's writing. Uh, just the way the narrative unfolded was just amazing. It's just an incredibly interesting, enjoyable book, and I am definitely interested in checking out more from Christopher Priest, but I know nothing of his work. I have heard good things in general, mutterings here and there, but no specific recommendations, so... Alright guys, that's it. Those are a selection of books that I have only read that one single book from the author. Um, I recommend all of those titles to you guys and hopefully those of you familiar with the authors will give me a little help and a few recommendations on what would be good for me to try next from them. Thank you all for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you soon.